Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 33. In this tutorial we're going to fix our weapon so as it doesn't keep clipping into the wall over here. And we're also going to add a sound effect to this door and possibly add a little bit more behind here to kind of move on to our next area where we're then going to work on uh, probably a, some kind of jump scare in the next tutorial. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, like I said, the plan is that once we get through here, I want to work on a jump scare. But this isn't going to be a jump scare where you, uh, like an enemy suddenly appears, that kind of thing. I kind of want to go for maybe you walk into a room and something just kind of falls off a shelf kind of jump scare just to make you stop and think, oh, what was that? So eventually, we'll, we'll next tutorial, we'll get onto that. So for now, let's fix our gun. So at the end of last tutorial, we kind of, or rather I kind of showed you that at the moment, our gun just kind of goes through everything. So I want to fix that first thing. Now, we have dealt with a couple of different things here and there. We've done tags and whatnot. But we're going to use layers to actually allow this weapon to be on top so it doesn't glitch and clip through everything in the scene. So to do that, we have to follow a particular little order of cameras and we need another camera in the scene. But obviously the camera needs to be in the same position that our first person controller is in. So to do that, let's go to our first person controller. Let's go to our first person character and on there, let's right click and let's go all the way down to camera. Now this camera will render the exact same position of our first person character. So the good thing about that is that we don't need to worry about adjusting a camera, making it go forward, backwards, anything. It's going to be in the exact place that we need. So next thing we need to do is on the gun itself or weapon, this will apply to any weapon we go from here. We need to go over here in the inspector panel and change the layer from default to one that we create ourselves. So let's go to add layer. Let's go to the next available layer. In this case, it is layer eight. And we'll simply put this one as weapons. So anything we create in the future, which is classed as a weapon, will go in layer eight. So we just need to make sure that we do set that M9 as eight weapons. There we go. And yes, change children as well, because there are a couple of different objects on here and we want everything to appear on top we don't want it to look a bit silly like the hand the trigger or something appears wrong so just make sure we do set all the children objects so the next thing we need to do is prevent the first person character camera which we can see right here from rendering the gun itself so we need to go to the culling mask right here and you'll see all of these layers and we need to untick weapons now, if we turn the camera off that we created and press play, we should see that our gun is no longer rendering. However, if we go and pick up some ammo, we can still fire the gun. So it does exist. The reason it's not displaying is because this camera is now not including that gun in what it can see. So we need to do the complete opposite now of what this camera can do. So we need to make this camera only see that gun. So to do that, we need to go to culling mask and click on nothing and then click on weapons and then let's reactivate it. So hopefully the camera preview should now look like that. It only sees the gun and obviously the skybox as well. So why do we have the skybox there? We don't need it there. We can go to clear flags right there and have depth only. It'll still appear for now. However, the reason we have depth only is because we only want it to render this particular layer. So in this case, weapons. Final thing to do, if it's not appearing quite as it should do, we need to change this depth to, let's say 60. 60 should do the trick. So now what's gonna happen is this camera will render only the weapon and this camera will render everything except the weapon. So when combined, this layer 
will always be on top. So let's quickly check that out and make sure this works as intended. So far so good. And there we go. The gun no longer clips into the wall. Excellent. That is exactly what we wanted. So you're going to have to do this to uh, all the first person controllers. And luckily we only have uh, one other scene, is it? The first scene that we created. So let's quickly go and adjust that and make sure everything is okay. So remembering now, when we adjust uh, the game later on, add more scenes, we can easily just bring in the FPS controller. We don't need to do this routine again for any new scenes. So let's go to our FPS controller and let's do the same again. So we can see just how quick this is. Uh, let's go to the gun itself, set the layer as weapons. Yes, change children. And then on first person character, let's create that extra camera. And then on first person character, let's remove the weapons. And then on the camera itself, let's have depth only. And then calling mask, click nothing. And then click weapons depth. Let's have 60. So now let's try all of this out. So I'm just going to save that scene, press play. Remember, we don't have the gun straight away, so we need to go through that door oh, and pick it up where am I? and just make sure this works. I need to get out of here. So let's head over here. Looks like there's a weapon on that table. I think we need to sort the post-processing out. It's whoa, mad. Okay, so there we go. No longer glitching through walls, and that's exactly what we wanted. So that's how we can fix our weapon. So let's head back to scene two, and let's work on um, this door, isn't it? So let's basically just have that creak sound. I'm sure we've had a creak sound before on here, so that's fine. We can deal with that. So that means we need to go to the locked door script, I believe. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, I cannot remember if we do have the creaky door sound um, on our player. I don't think we do because I think we used it in the intro sequence, didn't we? So let's go to our first person controller. FX, creak sound. I think that is the one actually. I'm gonna have play on awake and just have it play. Yeah, okay, we do have it because yeah, we used it in the first scene, didn't we? So let's do the creak sound on this door as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to increase the pitch here to 1.2 because this will sound a little bit different now, which is kind of what we want. We This is a way of showing that the same sound effect can be used, but modified very slightly to seem like a completely different sound effect. So let's go back to our script and let's add in public audio source and we'll have door creak semicolon so obviously when we open the door that's exactly what we need to do so we need to find the right section um if input action distance to enable false okay Did we, is that the right one? I'm thinking, I'm thinking because, yeah. Do you know what, it's been a while since I've recorded because I've been trying to upgrade to 2019.3 and checking everything works. It's been a while since I've done this. I think this is the right one, isn't it? Should be. Yeah, it definitely is the right one because we deal with that, the trigger, and let's hinge. So first door key. So first key door. So that opens the door, doesn't it? Okay, yes, that opens the door. So, okay, I'm with it now. Apologies, guys. I really should have kept up to date with this. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, um, we need door creak dot play oh close bracket semicolon and save so i was saying about uh, this is 2019.3 so those who follow the series have probably noticed the difference between the last tutorial and this tutorial 
Uh, that's simply because I've spent some time upgrading to 2019.3 and just making sure all my projects work okay and as intended. So if you're kind of new to the this series and you're already using 2019.3, no problem. So anyway, let's add that door creek over there, um, right there. Didn't want to go over, but now it will. There we go. So let's save our scene and press play. And let's just make sure that works. So firstly, we need some ammo. Let's pick up that key. There we go. Perfect. So, like I was saying earlier, I would like some kind of little jump scare here where something falls off here and suddenly, woo, scary for us. So, I am quickly going to bring in a light source so we can kind of see in that section over there. But all I'm going to do is just bring in this little candle here. So I really like this candle. Uh, so let's bring that into that little section over here. And I might turn off the post-processing for now. Just so we can see everything a little bit better. Uh, test light, let's turn that on and bring it over here. It's amazing what post processes can do sometimes. It really changes the dynamic of a level. So I'm just going to quickly build up this little section of the room while I explain what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So as I said, this is probably the third time I've said it now, we are going to have that little kind of, you can call it a jump scare, I guess, but it's going to be something that stops us in our tracks. So we'll do that. And we'll probably also um, start looking at a puzzle. So what I mean by puzzle is I have an idea where I want to bring together two parts of an eye and that'll open up some kind of secret passage for us. So we'll start work on that maybe in the next tutorial, maybe the one after. I'm not 100% sure, but we will soon see. Let's turn test light off now and probably bring in a bit of light to there. So I'll duplicate that light, bring it into our other room. If I can find it again. There we go. And let's put pro post processing back on. And in fact, do we even need that light? Yeah, I think we do actually, but I may dim it. Let's have intensity 0.5 okay there we go so i'm happy with how that's going so yeah next tutorial guys is going to be fun it really is so until that next tutorial, guys thank you very much for watching